You know, a fork of this guy. You are the company you keep. And his BFF is the greatest. Now, y'all, I'm sorry this is so late. You asked for a video about this dude a long time ago. And I couldn't be bothered because I just don't care about him. And I have too many stories I want to tell. But um, it's time that you stop believing your buddy, dude. His response to all this, in addition to the other stuff I'm going to tell you, is why I don't like this man. Before I forget, first of all, do you remember when he came out with that new movie with uh, Reese Witherspoon? And people were criticizing him because like, they, he wouldn't even like touch her on the red carpet. Uh, and it looked weird. It looked awkward. And people were like, what's wrong with you? And he's like, well, you know how Hollywood goes. If I touch her on the, on the red carpet, people are going to think we're cheating. Like he said something so ridiculous that clearly says that this man does not understand what the hell women have been talking about. It's not that you can't literally hug or touch your co-star that you did a romantic comedy with. Like... But that's like the least of the things that I care about, okay? Let's get started back with Demi Moore. Then we'll come to his little great best friend here, okay? So Demi Moore has one of the most tragic backstories. I don't know if you know her story. I've not read her memoir, but from what I've learned from her memoir, holy crap. So she has a long history of eating disorders, uh, drug addiction, and alcoholism, as most people who have traumatizing childhoods tend to resort to, right? Unless they have some serious, serious therapy right out of the gate and then still it's you know that I speak as one myself I mean any child who has to fish the pills out of her mom's mouth after a attempt at unaliving herself as a small child going through that and then her mom put her in dangerous situations including inviting men over that essayed her and her mom also used to take her to pubs and pimp her out like this woman tragic childhood okay now, um, Bruce doesn't seem to be as bad as most men, but I've already done a video on how much he kind of sucked because he wanted to, her to, to pe bring her down a notch. He wanted her to quit her career to raise his kid. Um, you know, oh, I've already done a video on him. I think it's the one attached to this comment. Okay, so then she hooks up with, after her marriage falls apart, she hooks up with Ashton. Now, everyone made fun of her for dating a younger dude, especially he was 15 years younger. Maybe that wasn't the wisest decision, but I am, I, if y'all know my content, you know I'm all for dating younger men. Maybe not that young, especially when you have so much trauma. And um, he has the backstory that he does, but uh, we'll get into that later. But look at this. This sucks. 20 years after quitting drinking, she took up the habit again, encouraged by Ashton, who did not believe that alcohol addiction was a real thing. And now this is her own codependency right here. She felt the need to please him. And after a glass here and there, as she put it, she became addicted again. And then shocker, after being addicted, he gets mad and, and then shames her. He takes a picture of her one night when she's passed out on the toilet and like makes fun of her for having an alcohol problem after literally encouraging her to start drinking again, because he didn't think it was a big deal. Like what? Now, again, this is her own unhealed codependency that trusted this idiot you know, she had she she lost a relationship with her children as a result of her going back into her addiction. Like her kids stopped speaking to her for a while until she got things back under control. So apparently also not far into their marriage, he's pushing her to have threesomes. So they start having threesomes because she felt pressured by him. Now, again, because of her own unhealed codependency and former trauma and maybe not having done enough work on that. When he was like, hey, babe, let's see some threesomes. She gave in. And then he ended up cheating and saying that, oh, it's not really cheating because, you know, we'd had threesomes, so I can actually hook up with them when you're not around, too. Like, the dude sounds awful. He also cheated on her <laughs> on his six-year wedding anniversary with her because this person, again, you guys, some of this is probably gossip and whatever. I'm just telling you, I don't, in general, trust any man in Hollywood with a lot of power. I worked in the film industry. I work in entertainment. I'm a comedian. I, you know, rose to the ranks of comedy world. And most of the men in the comedy world are absolutely terrifying because they haven't healed their trauma. They haven't unpacked any of this crap. And their misogyny is like next level because they're desperate for attention and fame and all this other stuff. And the people that they hurt, hurt the most are usually women and then go out on stage and everyone loves them. Why do you think so many comedians get Me Too and movie stars and any man in Hollywood with power? I don't trust any of them until, until proven otherwise. Anyway, <laughs> he lied to this woman. He's like, no, we were separated. So she hooked up with him. And then basically, no, he was cheating. But the dude has like a really weird history of dating anyway. He was supposed to go to an, a Grammy's after hours party with this woman. He was late 
like a couple hours late. He showed up her door. She didn't respond. And then listen, like this is so bizarre, y'all. Now also, I understand that anybody who is dealing with a major trauma will say things that don't make sense and not have emotions and whatever. So I'm giving him a little grace for that. But like he said that when he looked in and saw, he thought it was red wine all over the carpet and chalked it up to a housewarming party that she'd had a week prior. Like, and then when this woman's roommate found her dead body the next morning, and then when he found out later on that it, she'd been stabbed 47 times by a serial unaliver. You know what his first thoughts were when he found out she was dead? Call the cops and because his fingerprints were all over the door. <laughs> like, I understand that, but still, like, it's just weird. So the dude has bad luck with um, girlfriends because this is another one of his girlfriends that ended up dead. Now, I mean, this might just be bad luck, but I really believe that the company you keep and the company that you're around and the people you date, it says something about you. For me personally, lots of unhealed trauma were behind all my decisions to date violent or just like men who didn't care. This man is attracted to win women who have a lot of trauma and self-destruct because Demi, same thing. This one dies of an eating disorder. You know, her story is so tragic. And then when he was actually with Demi, we actually get some details of that story. And he's actively encouraging her to be self-destructive and go back into an addiction that she had finally had some kind of control over, which then literally risked, and she almost lost her relationship with her children, which seems to be very you know, important to her. Like, this dude just sucks. And you know what? I think I'm always suspicious of men who do a little too much with something, and we don't know why, because a lot of times we know that that's a front for them actually um, trying to cover for something else, right? And I learned this when I was, you know, when I took kids backpacking, one of the children on my course, his father was a very famous leader of like an NGO or something, very big in like the helping kids world. This man had two adopted sons and he kept them chained into in, in, to their bed in their, in their rooms. Like I had to file a, like a, a report to like like family services or whatever you call it after that course i was so afraid for this child when he told me all the stuff that this like you know giving nonprofit dad was doing so many of these people who do this stuff it's a cover not always but a lot of times so him being so invested in this organization that you know it's, demi was clearly behind it and he was spoken con whatever like okay he he says he's you know against you know uh schmegel exploitation on the web on the web blah 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 and then this, you know, 2019, going to like a um, Scientology wedding with his BFF, a Danny, who was, you know, accused four counts of great. Now, I'm not going to go into the whole case. I don't have time. But I do know that this photo was leaked, that his BFF, who was accused of horrific things, he was still partying with. I'm sorry, but um, if, you know, if you believe your homeboy because there's like one accusation that's questionable but four and they're from women within the church of scientology which is like one of the most powerful forces in hollywood nobody goes against them without risking like destroying their life yeah this is unrelated but i thought it was fun. sharon osborne who i don't care about called him a rude 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 little boy <laughs> this dastardly little thing said he was the rudest person she's ever met and i don't care i just thought that was funny i'm sure uh she's got a lot of issues too but Ashton has stuck by this grapist pretty much the whole time. I saying nothing at all or even things like, I, I, you know, he, he hopes he'll be found innocent. And then he's all like saying that, you know, someday his kid is going to read about this as if you care about that kid, dude. And then said something like, I wholesale feel for anybody who feels like they were violated in any way. One of his, one of the victims of this guy even um, criticized Ashton being like, bro, you were like run like a Schmegs trafficking nonprofit and you still won't condemn your grapist friend what is wrong with you because in what ashton doesn't say has always made it very clear that he pretty much thinks that these women are might be accusing him and that you know everybody who feels violated he even was like said how he was like use one rule you don't do fucking stupid thing you're fucking you're fucking up for every money you know how hard it is to get a great conviction and 30 years. There's no way that guy's innocent. But Ashton thinks so. Seriously, y'all, if the court of law somehow got a 30-year sentence for grape and also was up against the whole Church of Scientology, which was trying to meddle in all this, and they still found him guilty, he's guilty! Bork Ashton.